Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the wireframe modifier. Let's get into it. To start us off, we have a grid mesh. I'm going to assign a wireframe modifier to it. The wireframe modifier generates geometry around the points and edges of our mesh. We can change the thickness of that geometry, and we can change the offset. If the offset is set to zero, the new geometry will be set around the original faces. An offset of one will place the new geometry on top of the original faces, and negative one will place it below. For a non-manifold mesh, the default is for boundary to be off. This means that the outside of our mesh will not be closed in. If you want these edges to be closed in, choose boundary. The replace original option removes the original mesh and just leaves the new wireframe. We can of course turn this off to have both the wireframe and the original mesh. Here we can see if we change the offset to 1, the new geometry is sitting completely on top of the old mesh, and at negative 1, completely underneath. When you have face angles that are smaller than 90 degrees, if the even thickness option is off, you'll see that the, the new geometry gets thinner in those angles, and thicker on larger angles. If you don't want that, you can choose even thickness. In a case like this, where some of the faces are very large and some are very small, choosing the relative option will make the wireframe around the smaller faces smaller and the larger faces larger. If you're going to apply a subsurface modifier after your wireframe modifier, like this, you may want to set creases on your wireframes. To do this, choose the crease edges. You can then select how much of a crease you want. If your object has more than one material, like this one, where material 1 is set to this white material and material 2 is set to this green material, you can choose the material that you want your new wireframe to use with the material offset. Keep in mind this will not change the material on the original, so if you choose not to replace the original, you can have a different material on your wireframe and your original object. If you would like your wireframe to only apply to part of your model, you can create a vertex group. Here, I've assigned one half of this object to a vertex group, and not the other side. If I choose this vertex group, you'll see that only one side of the object now gets the wireframe. The factor option lets the mesh know what to do in cases where the vertex group is zero. So here, if I want to have just a little bit of wireframe where the vertex group was zero, I could increase this just a little bit. And there, I have a small amount of wireframe where it was zero, and this amount where it was 1. The wireframe modifier can come in really handy if you want to do a render that includes some of your wireframe data, if you want to show off the geometry of your models. Another instance where the wireframe modifier can come in handy is a quick way to generate some scaffolding or radio tower type structures. Take for instance this object. If I were to add a wireframe modifier to it, I get something that looks pretty decent really quickly, and the underlying model is really simple. If I wanted to add extra cross beams, I could simply join some of these vertices. I hope this quick tour of the wireframe modifier has been helpful. I hope it inspires you to do something awesome. If you're finding this series of videos helpful, make sure to hit that like button and hit subscribe. And if you want to interact off of YouTube, go ahead and check out our Discord server. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.